When it comes to integrated amplifiers, the one brand that I turned to very early in my hi-fi journey was Denon. Their line of PMA integrateds, they were just the stuff of legend to me, and they represented everything that I always seemed to want, but sadly could never afford. Nowadays, you can find a Denon at just about every budget level, but rather than talk about the brand's new flagship, PMA A110, an amp that a lot of you are probably only gonna be able to hear or read about, Christy and I went ahead and bought their entry-level PMA 600E. Why? Because it's offered at a price point many budding enthusiasts will likely find agreeable. So go ahead, subscribe, hit that like button, and let's find out if we spent our money wisely. Yeah. The PMA 600NE is a stereo integrated amplifier that utilizes an advanced high current single push-pull circuit. The amp is good for reported 45 watts into 8 ohms and 70 watts per channel into 4. Like most modern integrated amps nowadays, the 600NE has both analog and digital inputs, the latter relying on a built-in 24192 DAC. The 600NE has a moving magnet phono preamp inside as well as Bluetooth connectivity. You can cut down on potential noise or interference from Bluetooth and digital inputs by running the Denon in its analog mode, which effectively disables all digital inputs, turning the 600NE into a purely analog affair. And thanks to the dedicated subwoofer output, you can add your own subwoofer for deeper bass. The 600NE is an attractive amplifier. It is a design that is very familiar to me and it's likely gonna be familiar to you if you've been looking at Denon for a while. I love that Denon hasn't even bothered to change the silk screening on the front of this amp as it is the same from, well, 20 years ago. And it's the same story when it comes to the operation of this amplifier. It is very, very easy to operate as everything is clearly and cleanly laid out. And it's the same story around back. There is plenty of room for bulkier interconnects and speaker cables. In fact, my only gripe about the construction of the 600NE is the non-removable power cord. I think that one of the easiest ways to make a product feel a little bit more premium is to give it a removable power cord, but at this price point, I understand, and I'm not that mad at Denon for not having one. Now, this being a more affordable integrated amplifier from a mass market brand, you would think that I would have paired it with similarly priced loudspeakers, like for example, our, our Monitor Audio Bronze 100s, which I did briefly, but we ultimately settled on the KLH Model 5s. I really liked this pairing and I didn't feel the least bit ashamed by it. And while some of you may take issue with our using a sub $500 integrated with a pair of $2,000 speakers, I believe it speaks to the Denon's capability if given the chance. We also paired the Denon with our 3000 micro subwoofer from SVS, which I tuned internally using the SVS app and the free software RoomEQ Wizard. The Denon does not have any subwoofer controls or DSP of any kind, so all adjustments to the 600NE's subwoofer output are carried out on the subwoofer itself. And as for sources, I paired the Denon with our Audio-Technica LP140 turntable outfitted with my favorite Ortofon 2M black cartridge, as well as connected the Arillic S50 Pro streamer for digital music. I also tested the Denon's Bluetooth connectivity using my iPhone. Speaking of Bluetooth, I found it to be one of the weaker inputs on the Denon. Yes, it's very easy to pair your smartphone with the Denon through Bluetooth, but it's just it's serviceable, but it's not a sound that I would call discerning. So the warm, laid-back tendencies of this amplifier are kind of amplified using Bluetooth. For example, a very, very favorite uh, demo track of mine is Moby's Everloving from the album Play. At the beginning of that track, Moby is heard humming exclusively from the left speaker. And because of the Denon's warmer, kind of richer, more laid-back demeanor, his humming is all but buried. Now playing that same Moby track back through the Denon's digital inputs through a physical connection with the Arillic S50 Pro, it improved things quite a bit. While some of the improvement may be down to the Arillic, I'm fully open to admitting that, there was more detail and focus when listening to this exact same track. The Denon still had that slightly warmer, rounder, laid back presence, but it dusted itself off quite nicely following what I will only describe as a sort of lackluster Bluetooth test. 
I don't want to beat up on Denon and Bluetooth. I actually applaud them for including it because I think it's an important addition. I can see friends and guests sharing their music on the 600NE easily through Bluetooth, but I just wouldn't use it for critical listening. While I'm confident those of you who already have a DAC will no doubt prefer that DAC to the generic one found inside the Denon, I have to say, when I use it in conjunction with our Arillic S50 Pro, the pairing of the Arillic and Denon was actually really complimentary. Now moving on to the analog side of things, this is where I feel the Denon really comes into its own. First, and I have to point this out, when listening to analog sources, whatever they are, I highly recommend engaging the amplifier's analog mode because there is an appreciable change in clarity and focus when this is engaged versus when it's not. Now, I'm not gonna go so far as to say that it's night and day, but it's noticeable. And you can take things a step further if you want by enabling source direct as well. Now, listening to Alanis Morissette's supposed former infatuation junkie on vinyl through the Denon was very pleasing. I know Christy hates it when I describe things as pleasing, but it's the best word that I can think of to use here. On the Alanis album, the Denon wasn't the most refined or ruthlessly articulate that I've heard, but I kind of enjoyed its old school sort of vibe. The Denon's inherent traits were still on full display. Make no mistake, this is an amp that is laid back and warm. The performance rarely, if ever, extends forward of your speaker's baffles. Instead, it lives several inches, or in some cases, feet behind, giving you more of a, more of a mid-haul presentation rather than in room. That sense of distance also allows for instruments and vocals to kind of swell and start to bleed into one another ever so slightly, giving the entire presentation just a, a broader, richer tone rather than one that strives on pinpoint accuracy. And while some of you may think that this is undesirable, I actually found it kind of pleasing at times. And I say sometimes because sometimes I just don't always want to analyze the music or movie. Sometimes I just want to enjoy it for what it is, and the Denon gives me permission to do that. It's the type of product that is, well, hi-fi enough. There's enough detail that nothing is outright missing, enough presence that it manages to be intelligible, and enough dynamics to keep things interesting. So the 600 isn't the best at any one thing, nor the best in its class, but it does a pretty good job striking the right blend of everything that for daily listening over a broad range of genres, it can be pretty good. Now bringing it back to Alanis for just a moment, I know her voice can get a bit grating when she goes for broke, and yet the Denon's coloration keeps that harshness at bay. And this is a trait that is beneficial to a lot of modern recordings. For example, another one, Miley Cyrus's Midnight Sky. I know, it's Miley Cyrus, it's a pop track, but Midnight Sky is poppy and Miley brings it, but this is not a recording that I would call high fidelity. And in some setups, it's almost unlistenable at high volumes because of compression. But through the Denon, you could crank this song all day and it just was never a problem. Now, one area where the Denon's subtle softness is a real issue for me is the bass. On its own, I just think the Denon's a little too subdued and recessed, and it just never, it never fully hits the way that I want it to. Adding a subwoofer and dialing it in properly helped to elevate the Denon somewhat in the bass department. So if you have small bookshelf speakers, I would recommend a sub with this amp, as it's just not likely to bring out more bass in already bass shy speakers. And even if your bookshelf speakers aren't bass shy, like our Monitor Audio Bronze 100s, the Denon just lacks a, a certain control down low, which is easily remedied with a subwoofer if you have one. Another thing I want to point out about the Denon's sonic performance is the soundstage. It largely exists within the speaker's boundaries. Depth is definitely stronger than width, and the focus within, like I alluded to earlier, it's not laser etched. So if you can imagine sitting several rows back or perhaps on the lawn, that's the sort of musical window the Denon is going to present to you with respect to soundstage and to a certain degree, dynamics. Adding a sub does free up some dynamic punch, but you just need to know that this is, this is a calmer amp. And as for comparable components, we put the Denon up against the Cambridge Audio AXA35, the AXR100, and the Rotel A11 Tribute. Now, straight away, both the Cambridge pieces exhibited a greater sense of presence over the Denon, not to mention greater focus and detail as well. The smaller, less powerful AXA35 sounded more dynamic and powerful compared to the Denon, and the AXR100 dominated them, well, just dominated them both. 
The Cambridge sound isn't forward. I just think in direct comparison, you're gonna really get a sense that the Denon is just that much more laid back. It's, the Cambridge pieces are still laid back a little bit and they're warm, but they're just not as warm as the Denon. They're definitely, definitely sharper, clearer, and more purposeful in their performance. And I just, I much prefer the Cambridge sound to that of the Denon. If you can stretch your budget 50 bucks, I think the AXR100 is likely the $500 stereo receiver to beat right now. But if you can go without digital connectivity, you can save yourself $100 over the Denon and just get the AXA35. Now moving on to the Rotel A11 Tribute. This is just a whole other ball game in my opinion. The A11 is a far more neutral sounding amplifier compared to both the Denon and Cambridge audio amps. It pairs well with every loudspeaker that we have in house, regardless of price or makeup. The A11 is just, it's an embarrassment of riches in that it manages to sound far more high end than its asking price would likely have you believe. It is definitely more expensive than the Denon at $799, but if you can stretch it, I think it's worth it. It is quickly becoming one of my favorite sub $1,000 integrateds available right now. Of course, my full review of both Cambridge amps as well as the Rotel are coming soon. Now, before I wrap this up, I can sense some of you are probably gonna have an issue with me reviewing yet another entry-level Denon piece. And the reason why Christy and I went out and bought the 600 NE over the 800 and 1600 was because of you guys. Because often you comment in the comments that you are looking for budget-friendly solutions. And the 600 NE, in my opinion, appears to be Denon's answer to that question. So yes, there are other options, arguably options from Denon that are going to be better. But I'm going to say that if you're just starting in your hi-fi journey and are looking for a budget-oriented integrated from Denon for whatever reason, the 600 NE is going to be that amplifier. And I would purchase it over the 800 NE unless of course you need the more updated phono preamp inside the 800 NE that allows for moving coil cartridges. As for the 1600, look, if you're going for a truer audiophile experience, yes, you should probably look at that amplifier, but it is a lot more expensive. And at its price point, it has a lot of competition. So I'm not saying that it is the best solution, but it is a solution. And as for those of you that may want me to review Denon's new flagship integrated, the A110, I would welcome that review. And if Denon wants to send one to me, I will happily take a look at it. But that's, that's not really what we're talking about here today in looking at entry-level solutions. In the end, as it relates to entry-level integrated amplifiers, the Denon PMA 600NE is a good one. It doesn't do anything wrong, but it doesn't outright win in any one category either. That said, I, I still like it. For casual or everyday listening, I enjoyed having the Denon in our system. It allowed me to relax and stop being so hypercritical, which in my opinion is a positive. So if you're on a budget or building a setup for a secondary room in your home, or you're just looking for something that's gonna allow you to listen for hours on end without a great deal of fuss, then I think the Denon is worth a look. I can't say that everyone's gonna ultimately pick it over something else in the end, but I'm not gonna lie there's something kind of pleasing about it. So that's it. That is my review of the Denon PMA 600 NE integrated amplifier. And now, what did Christy think? <laughs> okay, well, I'm not gonna lie either. <laughs> I didn't love it. You didn't love it? No, I didn't. And, and honestly, I've been really thinking a lot about Denon and their sound and like, what's up? Um, what do you mean? Well, okay, for example, we reviewed the PM, what is it called? The, the 150H. Okay. It's, it's been a while. It's like been a couple of years, I feel like, at this point. I, it feels like a couple of years. Yeah, Maybe it hasn't been that long. A little over a year, yeah. And I really liked that product. Mm -hmm. I thought it was like super stylish. I love the screen. It sounded good. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of things that I loved about that, that little integrated. Okay. And it's kind of similar to like the name Unity Atom in some respects. Yeah. I for mean, me. I mean, it's a thousand bucks, but it is, you I could mean, argue especially it's, at the price. You like, could argue it's a budget Atom. I, I thought it was, I thought it was, I really liked it. Yeah. But ever since then, 
the stuff that we've had come in house from Denon has been mostly disappointing. Okay. And now I know that that receiver we, we reviewed, um, the S960H, like mm-hmm. I know there was some issues with, you know, up, up, uh, like promising of things that they didn't quite, couldn't quite deliver on. But when you get rid of all of that, like I just didn't care for the sound. Yeah. And I find that that's the same thing here. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out, well, what's changed? Why did I like that the 150H? Mm-hmm. And basically, ultimately, since then, I'm just not responding at all to to, to the Denon sound. Okay. So I'm trying to one. I'm trying to figure out a has something changed inside of Denon? Like, are they doing things differently, mm-hmm. or is it me that's changed? And I'm. St- Starting to think that maybe I am just having a better understanding about what kind of listener I am. And Mm -hmm. that laid back sound is not something I gravitate towards, towards to. Now, I agree with you about the Cambridge, the cheaper, the the more entry level. Yeah, those entry level Cambridge pieces that we have in, in house. I do think they're better. But I will also say I was surprised that I liked them better because mm-hmm. I typically feel the same way about Cambridge sound. Yeah, I you're, think you're it's not that big of a fan. A bit boring in general. Mm-hmm. So um, when when we when we swapped those out, and there was so much more presence compared to this Denon piece, I was like, okay, that's that is a big surprise for me, and it just added more questions yeah. than answers. So I'm just ultimately I'm feeling a little bit frustrated not only with Denon but myself mm-hmm. in terms of what what what's the cause yeah what's what's, the ha- cause? what's yeah. happening here as far as uh, entry level products and Denon is concerned I don't know if they're if 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 in order to hit certain price points or economies of scale if things are getting watered down or if they're just the same and everyone else has elevated their game to such a degree that Denon no longer can rest on their laurels the way that maybe they could. Um, But I do think that it is just as much you now being more exposed. Like I I have a sinking suspicion if I brought the 150H back into this house, you wouldn't have the same experience or opinion of it. You may still really like its size, you may still really like its uh, feature set. Mm But I, I would almost be willing to bet that it would be a flip of the coin whether or not you would like its sound anymore. And I am I'm fully willing to yeah. agree with you there that that yeah. is quite likely that that would quite likely be the outcome. Mm-hmm. It's just I've struggled a lot with with how how to really articulate my thoughts about this particular amplifier and as it relates to just Denon in general, you know, without, because I don't want people to think like that I'm trying to like crap all over Denon yeah. because I'm not, I mean, I t- just to be clear, like I think, I think it's a really nice looking amp. It looks really well made. Mm-hmm. I don't have any fault with it there. I just, I just think that I don't jive with Denon sound. It, it just brings up more questions and makes me wonder, well, what makes, what makes an individual gravitate toward certain products and certain sounds? Mm-hmm. You know, like we really love Klipsch and there's, but there's, there's a whole lot of people that would tell you Klipsch is trash. just trash. Yeah. And, and the, you know, don't listen to anything on this channel because they don't know what they're talking about. They're, they're fans of Klipsch. Yeah. Well, you know, well, so what makes what makes a person tick when it comes to what they respond to when it comes to music. And, and that's why I'm like, I really, I'm really trying to understand where that, where all that comes from. And like, what is it about another, a person over here that's going to be like, well, I love Denon or I love Morantz, you know, or I love Macintosh, you know, versus somebody that's somebody else that's like, yeah, that's not that's not my bag, you know? I think it's going to come down to two things. 
Uh, number one, I think it's going to come down to accessibility, either what you can get your hands on and or what you can afford. Um, we'll start to build an allegiance pretty quick. It's hard to be it's hard to be loyal to a brand you can't access, you know. And so if you only have access either through geographic or financial means to X, Y, or Z, there's a real good chance you're going to become pretty loyal to those things because that's what you have. Um, so I think that's part of it. I think also part of it is if you then develop a loyalty to something, any brand, I'm not even talking about Denon right now, just any brand, um, the second anything comes out as the opposite or the antithesis or against what you're loyal to, that is going to elicit a reaction. And that reaction is often going to be very defensive because you're going to be very protective of what you have and what you like. And the thought of questioning something that maybe you have come to rely on, know, or feel is better than what someone else is giving it credit for is only going to elicit a defensive reaction. And that just gets to tribalism in hi-fi, tribalism just in anything in life in general. Um, but I think that that's, that's all of it. That's, that is what it is. And so I get it. I, I do. I get it that we're in a very fortunate position in that we can sit here and say, I would do this over that and that over, over there and this and that, and you got to try this. I get that that's a very privileged position um, and that a lot of you just do not have that many choices in the world, despite how connected we all feel and despite the internet and stuff, let's face it, it's not easy to go out and get, uh, you know, some type of product at the drop of a hat. And, and I'll, I'll admit channels like ours don't make it seem, our channels may make things seem a lot more accessible than maybe they are. Um, but that said, I think there's a real good chance that a lot of Denon fans have had Denon over and over and over again because when they go to the store, Best Buy or Circuit City at whatever time it was before they went out of business, you walked in and you had three choices. You had Sony, you had Yamaha, and you had Denon. Maybe you had Marantz if they had like a higher end wing of the store. Or they have a Magnolia in it. Now you get Marantz. But that was really it. And so you bought a Denon the first time. And the Denon did you well. It did you well. It didn't break. It did what you wanted. And, and you didn't have any real basis for comparison. So when it came time like, ooh, I want more channels or I want more features or I need this, you just re-up and you get Denon again. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And there's actually something wrong with people that want to pass judgment upon that type of person because you shouldn't be judged for that choice. You didn't make a bad choice because Denon is doing you right. And they have continued to do you right this whole time. And so they deserve your business. They've earned your business. All we're saying is that if you haven't decided who to give your business to yet, the Denon is an option. And if you have other options, you owe it to yourself to hear as many as you can or to make the best educated purchasing decision that you can. And I would love to be able to sit here and say, guys, the 600 NE, it's it. It's it. Dollars to donuts. I'm, betting, I'm a betting man and I'm going to say, I think you're going to really be tickled pink with this. I think some of you will be. I think some of you will be, but I could see some of you not. And that's... That's all I'm trying to get across. Anyway, that's it. That's it? That's it. All right, let's wrap it up. I want to. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so that's it. That is our review of the Denon PMA 600NE integrated amplifier. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you is this. What do you think of Denon's sound and build and construction over the years? Do you think that they've upheld their brand name or has something changed along the way? And if so, what have you noticed? Let's, let's get a conversation going down below. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here, and we both thank you all very much. 
Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for today. The storms are rolling back in. I apologize if the light has shifted throughout this review. We're doing our best to make it look sunny out here, but uh, Texas has been inundated with thunderstorms. So thank you for bearing with us. But remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.